Hey everybody, I want to tell you about a special adapter cable, this one right here. And it's the cable that you would use if you want to use a professional dynamic microphone with your mirrorless camera, camcorder, or some other consumer piece of equipment. This microphone has a 3-pin XLR connector on the bottom of it, and this cable has a female 3-pin XLR connector, which would connect to the microphone, like so. And then this end of it has a 1 8 inch phone plug connector that is tip ring sleeve, it's a stereo connector, that would go into your camera to provide the signal from the microphone. And this is a cheap and dirty, easy solution to get quality microphones connected to your consumer electronics. So is it a good idea? Do I recommend this cable? Do I think it's a good cable? Well, obviously I have the cable. I suppose that's an endorsement. Uh, I do think it's a good cable. It's um, really nicely constructed. I, I like the connectors on it a lot. They seem really high quality. The XLR connector uh, works well. It's snug and firm, but it's not tight. And it connects very nicely. It releases easily. It's just a high quality cable. So I like it. It's made by Cable Matters. And I'll put a link down below if you want to grab one. Uh, this one that I have is pretty short. It's just a little patch cable. But they come in longer versions if you'd like. So do I think you should use this cable? Is it a good cable to use? Well, I'm torn on that. It's a cheap and dirty solution. Cheap, yes. Dirty, well, we'll get into that in just a little bit. And so, if you need to connect a mic up to your camera, yeah, you can get her done with this. And I'm a bit torn on it because one side of me says, yeah, it's a easy, quick, cheap and dirty solution. Gets her done. Why not? But the audio engineer, the audiophile side of me, says, um, no, 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 no. This is not the proper way to connect a microphone to a piece of equipment. Uh, there's going to be some limitations involved in using a cable like this. And so this is actually not the right way to do things. And yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. This is not good. But before I get too far into it, let's um, just hook it up. I'll plug the mic in. I'll plug it right into the camera. And I'll turn this mic down so you can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to add a little bit of extra cable onto this thing with just a straight XLR mic cable. That really shouldn't make any difference in terms of the uh, sound quality or anything. So I'm going to plug my SM58 Shure vocal mic, standard mic, into a mic cable that just goes through to this one. And I'm going to go plug it into the Canon mirrorless camera that's recording this video. Okay, so now I've plugged this Shure SM58 dynamic microphone directly into the Canon mirrorless camera using that adapter cord. And you can see what the sound quality is. It should be working all right. Probably not too bad. It's probably fairly effective. And so, as you can see, this is a really inexpensive solution for just getting a microphone attached to your camera. Now, there are some limitations with this cable as to what kind of microphones we can use. And there are some limitations about the sound quality that this will provide. And so let's get into that in a little bit more detail. And meanwhile, I'm going to disconnect this mic and go back to my normal mic. All right, so let's talk about the limitations of a simple cable like this. This cable has three connections on both ends. It's got the XLR connection that goes to your microphone with pins 1, 2, and 3. Uh, pin 1 is ground, 2 is high signal, and 3 is the low signal. On this end, we have a 8th inch phone plug connector that is tip, ring, and sleeve. Tip and ring correspond to left and right audio in your recorder, your camera, and the sleeve, of course, is ground. So since there's three connections on both sides of this cable, one might presume that it's just wired straight on through, but that is not the case. 
this is uh, an adapter cable and so what you'll find is that the ground on the XLR connector that goes to the microphone goes to the ground on the phone plug side that would make sense the number two pin on the microphone side which is signal hot goes to both the left and right outputs on the phone plug and then the other remaining wire on the XLR plug the signal low just goes to ground it comes through as a mono signal on both left and right which is nice I think but as you can see it does not properly handle both of the signal lines off the microphone it just ties one to ground so this is an unbalanced cable it's not a standard balanced microphone connection if you get a long run of this cable it is potentially susceptible to picking up hum and noise from the environment uh, more so than if it was a properly balanced connection the other thing is that this is going into a piece of consumer gear like your mirrorless camera and the input impedance of that uh, preamplifier might vary but I would suspect that in most cases that's going to be a high impedance input these microphones professional microphones are low impedance microphones they're designed to push and drive a signal into a low impedance preamplifier input the bottom line with that is that the loading on this microphone as offered by your camera or pocket recorder is not what the designers of the microphone intended the microphone to drive and so that could mean that the microphone is not going to be working at its highest potential it could have aberrations in its frequency response uh, transient response the microphone may or may not really be working as well as it potentially could because it's not being connected to a proper preamplifier load that the microphone is designed to operate with the other thing is that this is an unbalanced cable it's tying one of the signal lines directly to ground and being an unbalanced type of cable that means that this cable cannot be used with phantom power meaning that you can't use condenser microphones that require phantom power using a cable like this and your consumer electronics such as your camera is probably not going to be providing phantom power at any rate either now I don't want to get too far off on a segue with this but your electronics probably are providing plug-in power which does provide a little bit of DC power on the microphone jack that's used to power things like condenser microphone elements that are in a little lapel microphone or a lavalier microphone but that's a different standard than phantom power is used by three pin professional microphones so if you have a professional condenser microphone that uses an XLR jack on it uh, it's not going to work with this cable or with your consumer equipment so this is only good for dynamic microphones also <clears throat> because one of the signal lines is shorted to ground uh, if you somehow did some adapting and put this into a microphone line on a professional mixer that had phantom power engaged that wouldn't be such a good thing because you'd be shorting out the phantom power supply in the mixer uh, most likely the designers of the mixer design it for people to make mistakes like that so it probably wouldn't damage anything in the real world hopefully but this cable cannot be used really in any way with a phantom power enabled connection or a condenser microphone but it's also a quick and dirty solution gets her done it allows you to plug a mic right into your camera and chances are with most microphones most cameras it'll probably work out just fine if your requirements and your expectations are not really high so what's the proper way to do this well the proper way to do this is to connect the microphone to a proper microphone preamp that uses all three pins that operates as a balanced connection from the microphone loads the microphone properly as it was designed to um, 
A preamplifier like that may also offer phantom power, so that would open up the possibility of using other microphones, like condenser microphones, if you wanted to. And then the output of that preamplifier box would then go to a connector that looks like this end, which would go into your camera. And that would be a better solution, give you better fidelity and lower noise. Now, I take it personally one step further than that, and I bypass the camera entirely, and I use an external recorder. I use a Zoom audio recorder. And the reason I do that is because the audio preamplifiers and the audio section of the camera just isn't pristine. It's okay, but it's not great. Now, your camera may differ from mine. Maybe your camera has fantastic audio processing, but my Canon camera has good, but not amazing audio. And so I don't use any of the audio features in the camera except for helping me get the video synced up, but that output doesn't end up in the final production. I use an external recorder, the Zoom F3, which has really good sounding preamps in it, low noise floor, and gives me the highest quality audio. So that's why I do my audio recording completely separate from the camera. But if I wanted to just quickly plug a mic into the camera, I might use a cable like this. If I wanted to get better fidelity and I was concerned about audio quality, I wouldn't use a cable like this. I would use a XLR balanced microphone interface that is designed to then drive the camera. You could do that with something like the Zoom F3 recorder, which takes a microphone input, and it also has a monitor output that you could run a wire from that into the camera to feed audio to the camera. There are also specifically made devices that would sit on your camera and provide an audio preamplifier for professional microphones. So I hope that clarified things for folks, gave you a little insight, and uh, this is a convenient cable if you want just a quick and dirty solution that gets you there, but you're willing to accept a little bit of compromised audio quality. If you're interested, put a link down below. You can check it out. This one's by Cable Matters, and like I say, I think the quality of this particular cable is pretty nice. Um, I ordered the short version. I know it comes in longer versions if you're interested. I'll also put some links down below to an example or two of audio preamplifiers that would be a more professional solution, a better solution for connecting pro-level microphones to your mirrorless camera or other consumer equipment. If this was helpful to you or interesting or entertaining, I'd appreciate it if you give me a quick thumbs up. If you like the channel, think about subscribing. That would be cool. Want to tip your talker? Well, you can always do that by throwing down a super thanks and I'm always impressed and grateful when people do that. Hey, thanks for tuning into the video, and I look forward to catching you again soon on another upcoming episode.